Hi everyone, welcome to Otaku Saga. I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. And I'm Zero. And Dan Anime Reaction, we finally get back to the 13th episode of Kuro Makuro. Finally. If you want to check out our reaction to the 13th episode of Kuro Makuro, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga. And don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So on this episode of Kuro Makuro, we open with a fight against a uh, sort of centaur-like mecha. Yeah, and uh, they're defeated, but they retreat. Yeah, yeah, really they, they got defeated, but well, she got defeated, but she was she retreated, and she it showed her kind of like I guess regrouping inside her armor. They have that recover like it does. I, I think the whole plan was originally to have them both go down and have um, have the main focus be on the mech to but, have it uh, be a distraction. Yeah, they, they they drop off the second infiltrator who dis who infiltrates the rest of the town mm -hmm. while the mech goes goes off and takes takes all the heat pretty much. But then we get a uh, we get a cultural festival episode. Yeah, and uh, Yukina's and Kaneske's class decide to hold a discussion on the Epi Bulg and uh, the recent uh, mecha attacks. Interesting conversation topic, but uh, yeah, unique to their town and that class in particular. They decided to have a political debate for their cultural festival event. It's a current event, it's in the town they're in, and they got three mecha pilots in their class. Why not? Yeah, it's certainly interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, I don't think any... Uh, I don't think any uh, teenagers in high school, I mean, unless they're in like civics or uh, forensics, would do anything, have to, would have anything to do with politics, huh? Or any well, current events, really. Uh, in, in our high school, we actually had a debate club. Well, that's yeah, what I mean, the, the forensics the is debate. But yeah, I mean, this team. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, that's kind of specific, it's what you're there for. I'm talking about just for like a regular class wide assignment. Unless you're in something like specific, like you know, debate club forensics or like U.S. civics. Uh, in this case, in this case, it really works for them. Yeah. Um, of course, we had uh, Mika roll out her cosplay stuff again. <laughs> really, just a uh, uh, what's the what's the term? Uh, is she she seems to be in the series for uh just to have that that kind of the the cosplayer you know uh I can't there's guess. an there's an actual term for it it's like uh oh creator uh projection or something like that hmm she's just there is like she used to bring out a whole bunch of costumes for characters to wear Okay. Okay. A cosplay catalyst, as it were. Well, uh, kind of like in, uh, uh, it's the same type of character in Lucky in Lucky Star that um, uh, the main character uh, Konata. Yeah, Konata is kind of a uh, creator's projection, really. Hmm. I can't remember the actual term for it. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, so in the middle of the debate, which was going on live stream. Thanks to you know who. Yeah. Um, in the middle of the debate, a Ethelberg. Yeah, <laughs> Ethelberg. Assassin um, showed itself and attacked Kanosuke. Stabbed him right in the chest. And it just so happens to be Kanosuke's former love interest, Yuki Hime. Yeah, and the final, the final shot, her head, her her head falls off. Yes, her head <laughs> falls off, and reveals that uh, she was indeed the old princess. I really like that shot, actually. Just you see Kenosuke's look of pure shock and betrayal and all that stuff. Then he collapses, and you see Yukina with the same shock behind him after you see Yukihime's face come from underneath the hood. Really well done shot. And then you see Yukihime. And it's it's really interesting because like she has these she has red pupils, mm -hmm. um, and she literally looks like insane bloodlust here. The yonder version of Yukina. 
There you go. And this is after uh, Yukina decided to actually go cosplay. Oh yeah. Take a picture in cosplay. Yeah, kimono. That made her look exactly like Yukime. So that was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely like her swords. Or at least one sword. I definitely like the old weapons. I mean, the mecha, the weapons, it's just, yeah, that nice, like, glowing edge to them all. It's pretty cool. Yep. But it was, it, it's a nice, nice blend between the uh, the curved katana and the uh, the European style handles. I thought, I picked that, that's just cool. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to the next episode. Especially because the uh, preview was, uh, our can was Cam Boy uh, running with his camera in hand like <laughs> So you know something big is going to go down if he's doing that. But yeah, so uh, hopefully we'll get it out pretty soon. We do have it already. Obviously, it's uh, we're about a month behind on this series, so. Yeah. But let us know what you thought of the anime and what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yeah, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. But that's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. I'm Jiro. And I'm Rizzo. See, See you next time. time.